Let's be in no doubt, Mario Kart is coming, and when the series triumphantly returns, the likelihood has to be that we will continue the trend begun so many years ago with the Mario Kart 8 DLC and have racers not just from within the Mario universe, but from across Nintendo's properties. It's not just that it will be a fun development in the series, but also Nintendo is actively working on developing and promoting their intellectual property, and a marquee title like Mario Kart is the obvious place to make people more aware of all they have to offer. It is their shop window. If Mario Kart Tour was a tour of the real world, the next Mario Kart game then could be a tour of the mad, mad world of Nintendo properties. I also hope they continue the trend they started, particularly with the Animal Crossing track, of having tracks with highly unusual and distinctive features that reflect the character of the games they adapt. In the case of Animal Crossing, you never quite knew which season you would end up with, but I think these madcap creators could be even more ambitious than that, as we'll see. So, which tracks and locations are likely and unlikely for karting action? Let's take a look. First of all, let's consider the Mario universe. Nintendo has paid homage to Mario titles before, notably with the Luigi's Mansion track, which has appeared in several titles. In the Switch era, we've had several Mario spin-off games, though. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, Princess Peach Showtime, WarioWare, and Luigi's Mansion. And I think each have to be fair likelihoods for new tracks. Of course, the one that's the biggest deal is Luigi's Mansion, but then again, as it's not new territory for Mario Kart, perhaps it's therefore less likely. I'm not saying all of these would feature, but there is a certain logic to all of these games having some kind of reference, and I'd say there's a 70% chance that at least one of these spin-offs is acknowledged. Less likely, it seems to me, is Paper Mario. Given that Mario Kart 8 gave us Mario in classic, Tanuki, Baby and Metal forms, it seems only logical to allow Paper Mario to turn up. Of course, it would be tricky to see a flat character from behind, so the character would likely have to be turning constantly. This logistical consideration, plus the fact that Paper Mario has been around for a quarter century without getting anywhere close to kart action, makes me think that this remains unlikely, except that it would be really cool, and with Nintendo trying to bring its franchise together, it would make sense to promote this branch of Mario's adventures. There are other potential Mario versions who could get a tilt. Maker Mario would look awesome with his hard hat, especially if he had some kind of extra abilities. Imagine if he could add question blocks or something else random as a special feature of his character. A Mario Maker track could be even more fun if it had some Maker elements incorporated. Perhaps you get the powers to allow you to delete or add ramps or other obstacles to the tracks as you go, meaning the track will be constantly changing as you go around. Then there's Movie Mario. I suspect Nintendo will want to keep their life easy by separating the Movie Mario from the Game Mario for as long as possible and probably forever. As soon as Movie Mario crosses the threshold, you're into a world of pain with rights issues and legal considerations. Plus, frankly, I don't think the movie version looks all that good and he would stick out like a sore thumb in the game. But if Mario Kart is to be the ultimate party game, and since the title already has a goodly supply of Mario variants, this would make some degree of sense. Slightly more contentious is the great ape himself Donkey Kong who arguably is his own franchise, but is a regular guest in the games of his erstwhile nemesis. We already have Diddy, and with both the Retro Studios Donkey Kong Country titles getting a return in the Switch era, it would be a great opportunity to revisit some of these classic locations. In particular, I feel like the Juicy Jungle from Tropical Freeze would be a perfect location for some karting action. Donkey Kong has had stages before, but I wonder if with a focus more on franchises across Nintendo, we could see his own cup full of some of the wild and wonderful places he's been. Other characters to already have their nod from Mario Kart include Wario and Yoshi, but arguably these were quite generic levels to their characters, not specific to their games. WarioWare's diverse and madcap cast could make for a strange and ever-changing level. Imagine a Mario Kart course where the tracks around you change every five seconds while Yoshi's world of wool and cardboard could make fascinating locations as well. Then there's Princess Peach, a character I feel Nintendo are trying to push more than ever after the success of the Mario movie, and whose Showtime game could make 
for a reasonable benchmark for a title. The characters don't have to have games to make an appearance though. Rosalina got a nod with Rosalina's Ice World in Mario Kart 7, and the character who seems most deserving of the same kind of treatment is surely Pauline. A new Donk City course has to be an absolute slam dunk. Okay then, what if we step outside the Mario universe and we need to begin with the franchises which are already well represented? Most likely for a return appearance of the characters of Zelda, and not least, Zelda herself. Having starred in Echoes of Wisdom, it's scarcely imaginable that she would climb the stairs of Hyrule Tower just to watch Link zoom by from the balcony. The world of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom seems so ideal as well to exploit as a Mario Kart course or a few. Now, if Nintendo did go down the route of giving bespoke gameplay mechanics to courses, I've long thought that the Tears of the Kingdom mechanics could be the basis for an amazing racing title. We know Zelda director Hidamari Fujibashi loves his vehicles, and the chance to reassemble and ultra hand together vehicles always struck me as an amazing premise for a racing game, albeit one likely that is to be incompatible with Mario Kart's rigid mechanics. Of course, there are many more potential Zelda locations, and I would love the chance to race around the islands of the Great Seas, through the Twilight Realm, across Skyloft, and in particular, though it's perhaps the least likely, the chance to revisit Kohalint Island in racing form would be truly magical. Clearly, there are enough concepts here for not just an individual course, but a full-on Hyrule Cup. And then we have Animal Crossing, another core Nintendo franchise already represented in Mario Kart. The island aesthetic of New Horizons would give the chance to offer a new flavour to the racing action, distinguishing it from the previous Animal Crossing track, though whether it could sustain a whole cup is perhaps more dubious unless each season was its own track. However, if there's one game theme that's almost certain to show up, it's Splatoon. We've already had the inklings in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and the battle modes did feature Urchin Underpass, so it would be a matter of creating a course for them to fit. Whether it would be one of the existing Splatoon locations or a kind of amalgam of many others remains to be seen. Urchin Underpass is perhaps the most iconic, and since the stage hasn't been revisited since the original, it does make an obvious candidate to return. But then again, it has already been used for the deluxe battle mode. Personally, I'd love to see Museum Del Fontino or Camp Triggerfish, which have really intriguing and different aesthetics, although my favourite stage, Moray Towers, would also be brilliant. Instinctively, it feels like they would want to have a level that appears in Splatoon 4 for maximum synergy, but then again, Urchin Underpass didn't return in Splatoon 2, so perhaps this isn't much of a concern. Of course, there are two other franchises referenced in the original Mario Kart 8, and these are F-Zero and Excitebike. F-Zero 99 notwithstanding, this franchise seems poised for some kind of return. On the other hand, the two existing F-Zero stages were great, and it would make some sense for them to do a return if they're theming a game around Nintendo franchises. On the other hand, they may feel like they've got the gist of F-Zero for the moment from the original game. Excitebike is even murkier as the franchise has been gone for 15 years and developers of the Wii-era titles Monster Games have moved on to working on racers for PlayStation and Xbox. Nintendo doesn't mind referencing its history, even if there's no particular synchronicity with their current releases. And indeed, if Wii titles are eventually going to come to Nintendo Switch Online, there may be a reason to highlight this franchise. Plus, Nintendo could always revive it. Still, while I love the original Excite Bike track, it strikes me as one of the less likely to be revisited. Another Nintendo race that never got its karting due was Wave Race, and this seems a lot more primed for a return in many ways. Okay, so what about franchises that have yet have any Mario Kart representation at all. I think we need to start with those franchises wholly owned by Nintendo, and of those, there are three which surely stand head and shoulders above the rest in terms of potential. Pikmin, Metroid, and Star Fox. Pikmin is probably the biggest of the three in Japan, Star Fox definitely the one most on the outs, but all have iconic characters and locations which would fit Mario Kart. They're not without problems though, in the case of Pikmin, the whole gimmick is that the characters are tiny. You could imagine a Pikmin course where the world around is huge. Actually, there are already several Mario Kart tracks like this. But having Olimar as a racer would be tricky. Of course, Smash handled it by basically ignoring the size difference, and I guess this is the route Nintendo would have to take here. 
As for Star Fox, while it has been on ice for quite a few years, the characters are so iconic that they fit a mascot kart racer better than almost any other franchise, and there has to be a strong likelihood that the franchise will mount a return within the lifespan of the next console, making it even more worthwhile putting Star Fox into Mario Kart. However, there is one more first-party Nintendo franchise that I think is incredibly likely to muscle in on the action, and that is ARMS, for no other reason than that ARMS was developed by the Mario Kart team, and so they doubtless have a special affinity for these characters. Some kind of ARM reference, therefore, seems like it would only be natural. And while it's ambiguous as to whether we will see an ARMS 2, we know that Nintendo is keen to highlight the franchise given the appearance of Min Min in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Fighters Pass. After this then we get into characters and locations that are harder to predict, and they fall broadly into two categories. Category A are from franchises that are very big, but where the franchise rights partly rest with another company. These would include Fire Emblem, Kirby, Xenoblade, and of course Pokemon. Ultimately, if Nintendo wanted to go down the route of doing a full-on crossover title, I can't see they would miss the opportunity to spotlight these series, and in most cases they have such a good relationship and such a long-standing relationship with those studios that it shouldn't be any issue at all. Nintendo has a great relationship with HAL and Intelligent Systems, so Kirby and Fire Emblem should be no problems, and there's even the potential if Nintendo wished to go for deeper cut worlds like Box Boy, Push Bow, Earthbound, and ahem, Advance Wars, which could make for amazing tracks. Probably the hardest to get around of all these would be Pokemon, simply because while it's virtually synonymous with Nintendo, Nintendo's ownership stake is much less than particularly Xenoblade, where they own 96%. For this reason, I think it is the least likely major franchise to come to Mario Kart, even though, given enough time and possibly in future titles, it does feel kind of inevitable. Of course, Smash Brothers has showed us that it's possible to go big and weird. What would be the Mario Kart equivalent? Maybe Ring Fit Adventure's core space system could make for adaptation. Or even we could have a world made of Labo cardboard, which would be an amusing way to tie in these kinds of franchises. Frankly, if they did a Mario Kart game where you could put on a leg strap and race, I think they might open up a whole new world of exercise players. Then there are franchises which Nintendo does control but which are on the niche side. It would be hilarious to see Star Tropics return at last in car form, but I don't know I see it happening. Nintendogs, Punch-Out, Rhythm Heaven, Tomodachi and more are all potentials, therefore, but remember that Mario Kart won't be a one-and-done deal. Mario Kart 8 had DLC. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which included all the Wii U DLC, then went and had even more DLC. DLC is a natural fit for the games as it keeps the people coming back and playing and engaged with Nintendo's flagship title, and so I would expect some of those deeper cut franchises to return as DLC, even if they're not present on the courses at launch. Here's how I could imagine it working. Let's say there are 12 cups on the core game. Six would be Mario Universe, Mario, Luigi's Mansion, Princess Peach, Rosalina, Wario, and perhaps Paper Mario. Then there would be six cups from the wider world of Nintendo, Zelda, Donkey Kong, Animal Crossing, Splatoon, Pikmin and Metroid, let's say. Whether all the tracks within a cup would pertain to that franchise, or whether, as in Mario Kart 8, only one or two tracks would link in, I couldn't say, although personally I quite like the idea that whole cups would have some level of cohesion. Of course, then there's the scope for DLC, and here's where there's space for a set of cups around Star Fox, Xenoblade, Kirby, Fire Emblem, F-Zero and Arms, as well as another six cups, which are mostly traditional Mario Kart tracks, but contain the odd individual course that references some kind of classic game. Nintendogs, Game & Watch, Tomodachi, Astral Chain, the list is kind of endless. Now, the other question would be, what about third parties? I think it's very unlikely we will see any third party representation in Mario Kart. Certainly we won't see third parties before we see Pokemon, and that's currently one of the dicier ones. But Smash has shown that Nintendo is willing to negotiate with third parties, and it strikes me that the Mario Kart devs who seem to skew younger may be more keen to build links across the gaming industry and outside of Nintendo. Still, it depends on just how big the next Mario Kart is going to be, and my hunch is pretty big, but the case that Nintendo wanted their next console to be on shelves for 8 or 9 years, not an unreasonable supposition 
after the lifespan of the switch, although arguably they'll be lucky to catch lightning in a bottle enough to sustain such a long generation for a second time in the row. If they do this, though, it's possible to imagine them doing two years of DLC to 2027 and then resting the series. This, to me, would be the ideal time to release a Smash game, around the 10th anniversary of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, no less, and then have that be the eye-catching DLC series for the next few years. But then, towards the latter half of the system's life, what's to stop them doing a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course style approach to adding new characters? The Booster Course, of course, raided Mario Kart Tour quite liberally, and while I expect there will be a number of courses still ripe for conversion, unless they do another mobile game or keep expanding Tour indefinitely, the possibility remains that a new DLC pack would be much more expensive as an endeavour without a pre-made set of courses there to port across. Still, if they're going to do something new and eye-catching, here will be an opportunity to reach out to their closest partners and do something in the Mario Kart space. Pokemon would still be the obvious one, but perhaps also Monster Hunter, Final Fantasy, Pac-Man or Sonic. I think this would be the very earliest opportunity we could possibly see any kind of third-party element in Mario Kart, but even then, I think it is a huge stretch. As I say, I do not expect to see anything third-party in Mario Kart for the coming generation. Let me know, though, what you think in the comments. Check out this video on screen for more about Nintendo's strange history with racing games. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers and to everyone watching, and I will see you next time for another Nintendo Forecast.